What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jet Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, the reaction for Quantum Mania has arrived. A lot of the ones, Brian, that I've read, some of the reactions that I've seen is that Majors is wonderful as we thought he would be. And based on some of the, the things that they have released, he's going for it here, Brian. He's going for it. Yeah. Uh, the stakes, Brian, looks pretty high. People are really, were really excited about the things that happened there. I didn't see Brian. You you saw more than I did. For the po for the most part, I thought I saw a lot of positive uh, reviews. You said they were mixed. What did you see that sort of uh, is taking the air out of your excitement, possibly for this film? Well, I think the number one thing is reactions for films tend to be more, tend to overrate films in general. That's not just true of Marvel. That's true of almost anything. I said, go Google reactions to Black Adam, to the theatrical Justice League, to any superhero movie that you didn't like. And you will tend to see that the early reactions on social media are almost always glowing. Mm -hmm. And then the reviews come out and it's, it's very different. Why I'm concerned is, as I said, I think, as you alluded to, there was more of a mixed response to this than Marvel typically gets at this stage. So I am now officially curious to see, is the, is, does that indicate the critical response to this is actually going to be on the weaker side, which I don't think this movie can actually afford, and I don't think Marvel can really afford. Yeah. The good news, as you alluded to, is the biggest consensus positive is Jonathan Majors. I did not see a single reaction that took issue or umbrage with anything in his portrayal. He was generally characterized as by far the strongest thing in the movie and a pretty fearsome villain to behold. And I think Major's own comments and promotion have gotten me interested when he was asked about the connection to He Who Remains. And he said he deliberately did not rewatch the performance. He wanted it to stand. He wanted these two versions to stand not just apart, but almost in diametric opposition to each other. So. I think he definitely, as you say, is going for. He's going for a kind of precedent that he's going to try to carry through into Kang Dynasty and, and Secret Wars as the main villain of this multiversal saga. So that's the best part. The part that got me scared was the criticisms that I saw were about the story. And unfortunately, I think that's where Marvel has had problems. Mm -hmm. What was interesting to me was uh, there seemed to be a couple of camps of critique one was we know that this movie is much bigger than ant-man one and two and that was by design that was by request from the both the cast and the director it seems as if some people i can't tell in the reactions because they're short is it they're missing the kind of small scale almost adorability of ant-man and feeling like it's being smushed by like a more avengers scale approach in this film I saw a couple reference to basically like this film went for too much and didn't get there. Like that, that was the gist of it. Like this film was trying and swinging big and didn't quite make it. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean the movie's bad to me when I read that, but it definitely indicates that a certain camp of critics kind of found it off putting. The other thing I saw that was interesting was some critics seem to think that Marvel, which typically gets critiqued for its third act problems, I saw the critics having problems with the first act in this one. There were definitely some references to the setup being what didn't work, whereas actually the third act kind of did work. So we'll see if that's true. But see, people seem to indicate that once, I guess, we got deep into the quantum realm and got deep into Kang and whatever was going to happen, that that actually was better than whatever got us there in the first place. So that, those seem to be the main things. The other subplot, which... I think lends itself to one of my theories is the other scene stealer that people seem to be pointing to more often than not is Michelle Pfeiffer saying that she is the heart and soul of this movie and steal scenes. I think she dies in this movie. I think she is critical to uh, the storyline more so than even the promotion has indicated. But that was the other character that seemed to draw a lot of uh, positive, positive marks. Interesting. Uh, well, guess, I guess, Brian, we'll have to see for ourselves because, Brian, uh, we definitely are interested in seeing what uh, Kang sets Scott Lang off to do for him. 
Uh, certainly his performance, Brian, is going to be um, play a major factor in the acceptance of this film. Uh, majors I'm, I'm referring to. There are some aspects, Brian, when you say mentioning the first act of how it all, how they end up back into the quantum realm is what I think people may probably have some issues with. Um, I haven't seen it, but I'm going to make an analogy towards how Venom shows up in Spider-Man 3. The, the, the meteor thing, the, the coincidence. Oh, oh, the Oh, you mean like the Raimi, the Raimi? Yes, Venom, yes, not, yes, yes, yes. No, no, yeah, no, no. Okay, no. yeah. Yeah. So. A little parasite. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, oh, this is ridiculous sort of thing. So we'll see. Uh, but I'm certainly, Brian, very interested in seeing this performance. Uh, I And I think those things often save films. So let's see. I'm still very excited to see this film because I want to see how... I, I want to see what the hype is all about because there is a lot of hype for for this film, especially majors and what seems to be Michelle Pfeiffer as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm still, I mean, I'm still going opening night. I'm still going to see it multiple times the the first weekend, you know, in part for our for our show. But it's one of those weird. I think Marvel's in this a little bit of this weird place. I think if we're being honest about the path to a great Secret Wars only thing that really needs to land in this movie is jonathan majors if we're being honest mm -hmm. about right like if he's a 10 out of 10 as a you and i as like looking ahead that's probably the only thing we need like mm -hmm. if they okay we're gonna get the forever crystal and that's our MacGuffin, and now we've got our villain okay like we're we're probably gonna be excited for what's to come i think the issue is marvel where they are right now needs more than that at the box office they're coming off a, a disappointing year so i think they are then would be hoping for more especially with this movie being the first um move first movie going back into china on the same same opening day i think they'd want to come with a strong foot forward um although i should say based upon recent developments are we think we think we think any u.s movie is going to be released in china for that long <laughs> I don't, I don't think that, that might be a short-lived thing by the way that's a whole other topic but but yeah so that's where i feel like marvel needs this movie to be better than just one character but but fans probably only need and and ultimately the multiversal saga only needs majors to be great because that's the character that's really going to go forward from the story i am curious to see and i don't know how you feel about this i can't imagine that this movie has a happy ending like a really happy ending he effectively as as Paul Rudd eloquently puts it, I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. I can tend to think that probably describes the resolution of this film. I cannot imagine that there's a happy ending for the Lang family. I mean, if we are springboarding to Kang on his way to taking over the multi. Yeah. And there's a lot of, multi there's a lot of movies leading up to secret wars. And I suspect that Kang is going to be conquering. And we're going to be seeing that throughout this journey towards Secret War. So, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of or how you feel add, about can I, can I just add to yeah, that? Yeah. He doesn't just have to conquer. He has to dominate. Like, I think one of the things that made Thanos work well to me in Infinity War was the ease with which he was able to obtain the stones at each stop. The fact that he always seemed to be a step ahead of whatever the heroes were trying. I think Kang has to be, if you're going to put him at that level, he has to seem kind of unbeatable and unstoppable at some point. I don't know about unbeatable and unstoppable, Brian. I think there has to be a little bit exposition between the characters in terms of dialogue and some action sequences that put King or Kang's... Uh invincibility in question and his ability to overcome that there has to be some back and forth if it if it's done with these if it's done with these brian it has to be devastating right like there can't be this uh back and back and forth as i say a a, a long-standing one right there has to that king has to be dominating but in his in his uh, 
arrogance and confidence of his domination, there may be some opportunities that we may see. Uh, you know what I'm saying? There has to be some of that because if it's total domination throughout um, and he makes it look easy, that I don't know how much of that is entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't mean it that way. I just okay. meant in the sense that I, I kind of feel like this version of Kang the Conqueror almost has to be the weakest one we see, right? Because he doesn't have his crystal. He's matched up against Ant-Man. They clearly are going to tussle and, and there's going to be risk to Kang. But in, in a weird way, I feel like he has to leave this movie more powerful than he comes into it. He, and in thereby, a lot, from there, he then has to demonstrate, as you said, some degree of ruthlessness or preternatural ability to basically be like, I'm three steps ahead because I've already played this game. You know, like something like that, that almost makes it seem like, hey, this is not, I don't know, this this is not your run of the mill Marvel villain. But they've said, Brian, that, oh, there's a, some indication that he's the one that they've imprisoned in the, in the quantum realm because he was the worst of them. Uh, so this is perhaps the worst of ca the gangs that we're probably going to see. I'm interested in seeing the other Kangs, yeah. right? And that's the whole point of this, 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 this multiple Kang, multiple variants. So this is going to be very interesting, right? I'm excited for this film. I'm excited for the future of the MCU if they can make this work. If Kang the Conqueror works, he will be the Thanos we wanted to see more of. Instead, we're going to be seeing Kang. You know what I didn't see a lot of in the reactions to was, and, I, and maybe it makes me hopeful, is there weren't as many references to the credit scenes as there have been in recent films, which actually might be a good sign that they're getting back to a credit scene that actually achieves something. That is worth sticking around for and talking about. That's what, that, and I read that as well, Brian. That stick around for the the because we, before the, the, the mentions were there are some credit scenes if you want to see them <laughs> so stick around if you yeah want but to it see was about like the who right like yeah the, yeah the who where it's like well kind of forever as we said finally got back to the story it was moving the story forward so yes. hopefully this is that I haven't heard as many references to like you, you know. You can't or stick around. You, you won't believe who shows up. Yeah, I haven't yeah. heard of that. That wasn't in the reactions. For yeah, me. yeah, 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 yeah. So. Um, yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of uh, the reactions that Quantumania has gotten. Um, I'm going to be seeing it on opening day, Brian, so I don't know if you want to record on that day. Let me know uh, so that we can get our show out, out there to the people and give them our reaction, our thoughts on, on, on what happened there. That's going to be very, very exciting. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time on another Jim Report. Hit that like and subscribe. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs>